Good morning. It's about 6.51. I'm at the Lost Dutchman State Park, and I'm about to start a three-day, two-night adventure in the Superstition Mountains. All right, so the adventure we're on, it's a route that was originally put together by Jerry, Arizona. Um, I'll be spending the next three days, two nights out in the Superstitions doing a large loop. Um, I believe Jerry referred to it as the whole enchilada. Uh, doing the ridge line. Tonight I'll be sleeping at Robber's Roost. And then the following day, hike past Weaver's Needle, spend the night at Battleship Mountain, and on the final day, hike back to the Lost Dutchman State Park. Uh, when Jerry originally tried it, I think he was getting over COVID like a month before, so he wasn't in prime cardiovascular shape and he had to call it quits after the ridge line. Um, and then one of my friends, Brevin, you might know him as Moon Juice, came and did a lap on the iconic loop, um, made it look easy. Actually made it look like a lot of fun. So that's what I'm out here doing. I'll be making a few stops along the way. Let's see how this goes. Got four peaks looming large on the horizon. I'm standing on peak 5024. First stop, my action packed multi day trip in the Superstition Mountains. Next stop, Flatiron. So that's peak 5024 and the flat iron done. Now it's time to move on to the ridge line.
right, peak 5057. The second highest peak in the Superstition Mountains. Uh, the highest peak would be Mound Mountain. That's over 6,000 feet. And right now, I'm not brokenhearted that this is the second highest. The thought of doing another 1,000 feet of elevation right now, not particularly appealing. Fork in the trail. Left to Kearney Springs and Robber's Roost. To the right, Three Sisters. Mm, let's go pay these ladies a visit. Top of Three Sisters. If you have ever been to the Kearney Springs parking area, maybe you've hiked the Wave Cave, you've seen the Three Sisters. It's the uh, rock fins high above the Wave Cave. If you are hiking the ridge line or hiking to peak 5057, I highly recommend giving it a shot. Take a look. Better get moving. I still have to get to Robber's Roost before sunset. It's gonna be close. All right, well, I made it to Robber's Roost after sunset. I was uh, having too much fun on the ridge line and got here a little bit later than I planned, but all is well. I've set up camp, I've eaten dinner. It's been a very full day. Uh, let's see, where we start? Uh, peak 5024 and then the flat iron. Uh, then the ridge line, uh, then peak 5057, um, and then three sisters, and that brings us to here at the robber's roost. That's a full day. <sighs> and since it was such a full day, I've prepared myself a treat. I don't know what you like to do when you're camping, but I like to make epic desserts. So this, if you can see it, is a chocolate glazed donut, cream filled with peanut butter and bananas. You know, if I had some bacon, we might actually be able to conjure the spirits of Elvis himself. We are in the superstitions. Let's see if we can make contact with the spirit realm. Hanka Hanka burn in love, Hakuna Matata. I hold in my hand a whole lot of sweets that I crave, things that I love. As it is below, purple rain, crying dove. Wait, no, damn it. That wasn't right. That didn't work. Well, I am sad to report that Elvis is not in the building. And as incantations go, that's not my best work, clearly. But at least I can console myself with this caloric abomination. Cheers. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm going to need just a moment. Yeah. That is completely unnecessary, but beautiful. I'm going to turn the camera off and uh, make loud and appropriate noises while I eat this. 
something along the lines of uh, Meg Ryan when Harry met Sally, the diner scene. You know what I'm saying. I'll catch you guys in the morning. Good morning. I've packed up camp. I'm ready to move on down the trail. I'll be headed towards Battleship Mountain. That's where I'm camping tonight. And uh, I'm looking forward to a beautiful stroll through the superstitions. All right, made it to the Fremont Saddle. And uh, for a lot of people, standing here at the Fremont Saddle is the first time you get a good up-close view of Weaver's Needle. You can see it from the highway from the 60 and from the 87, but if you want to see it up close, this is really the, the best place to start. But I hear there is an even better view just over there. Let's go check it out. out or viewpoint um, absolutely stunning if you're looking for a good day trip just from the Peralta trailhead up to here highly recommended if only there was a way to get a better view Right, I'm in the West Chimney on Weaver's Needle. About to start climbing. There's nothing to it but to do it. at the boulder by the saddle. That's the majority of the real technical climbing done. Oh, I have to take extra care down climbing that, but I feel comfortable doing it.
And that is all there is for the climbing. Now I just have to stroll up to the summit. Ooh. And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to my ninth time standing on the summit of Weaver's Needle. Eight summits felt great. Yeah, nine feels divine. Oh. I just have to down climb, but slow and steady, nothing too technical. And there's Battleship Mountain. That's where I'll be spending the night. So I better shake a leg, get a move on. Almost back to the saddle but after that it's just a matter of getting back to my backpack and moving on down the trail off the technical climbing I'm back at my shoes so now I just need to put those on and make my way to battleship oh is it too late for disclaimer yeah you probably should not free solo weaver's needle on a down climb it's best to take a rope in gear do what I say not what I do I should probably take a moment and talk about what I just did uh, free solo climb up and then down climb, weaver's needle. So what that means is I didn't have a rope or a harness or the regular safety gear. Why would I do that? Uh, that was my ninth time climbing weaver's needle. Um, to say that I'm familiar with it is pretty much on the money. I'm familiar with it enough to know that I can, with my limited skill set, get up and down safely. Why didn't I bring a rope? Mainly because I'm doing a multi-day backpacking trip and the weight of the rope and extra climbing gear would have been doable, but it would have made everything else that I've done so far much more taxing. And uh, I did bring my climbing shoes, but I wasn't 100% that I was going to free solo the needle on this trip. It really depends on how did I feel? Was I well rested, well fed? Um, was I feeling fatigued at all? Low energy? None of that was the case, so I went for it. Um, also, uh, it's a low grade in climbing. Um, the kind of, for non climbers, class one terrain is a sidewalk, class two terrain would be a dirt path. Class three terrain would be, oh, it's kind of bouldery. Need to use my hands here and there. Uh, class four terrain is, it's hands and feet climbing, but it feels more like a very, very steep staircase um, as opposed to, you know, a sheer cliff. Then you get into class five, which is straight up rock climbing. Um, if you fall, you could die. The route I just went up, the most technical section is rated a 5.3. That's very low. I think 
you know, they're doing hard routes 514 plus, which is nothing I could do. At the best, I'm a middle of the road rock climber. I am not the world's best rock climber, that much I am sure of. But what I do have going for me is I'm tall, a little over 6'4", so I've got reach. So on what I was just doing, I could cherry pick the biggest, most secure holds for my hands and feet because I could reach them all, which ups the safety factor. And I wasn't rushing, wasn't trying to go fast. With stuff like that, it's all about slow and steady. For some added perspective, most rock climbing gyms, the lowest route they have on their walls is maybe a 5.6. You might see a couple of those and then some 5.7s. Anything a 5.3 would be something the kids could play on. Not to say that if you want to climb Weaver's Needle, you just come out and do it. It helps if you have some experience. For any hikers out there interested in getting to the point where you could climb up Weaver's Needle, a great example is my friend Brevin, Mr. Moon Juice Hikes. Saw the needle, fell in love, don't we all? And then joined a rock gym and spent a year getting the necessary tools and experience. And then he came out and climbed it. No problem. We had ropes and gear. It was safe. All I'm saying is it's accessible. It's attainable if you go through the steps and just put the right tools in your toolkit. That's all. Here on uh, the north end, the top of Battleship Mountain. I was expecting to see Troy up here. Starting to get a little bit nervous that he's not coming. This should be day two of the icon loop for Troy. Uh, and I just thought I'd get off work a little early and see if I can't uh, come up and, uh, and meet him. Uh, I brought a little bit of uh, trail magic for him and uh, I'm hoping he shows up. That's Ehlers Arch on Palomino Mountain. I would love to get a better look, but I just don't have the time today. I wonder how I could have possibly run out of time. Yeah, that's right. I spent some time up there. Okay, moving on. Anyway, it's 5 p.m. right now, and the sun is just about to set. To be honest, when I did the icon loop, I was here at like 2 o'clock. I, I, I found the second day to be really easy. And, um, and I got up here really quick. And I, I even told Troy, I said, hey, you can sleep in. You don't have to uh, get up too early. Uh, day two is, a lot of it's downhill. So until you climb Battleship, it's pretty easy. So I'm getting a little nervous. The canyons are already in the shade. If it was me, I'm not even sure I came up. I might just pitch my tent at the bottom and do something in the morning. Which... As the sunlight fades, I make my way toward the peak. I see a headlamp in my future. I don't know, I'm gonna keep hanging out at the top. Hopefully uh, Troy walks up, it'll be really cool. <laughs> He'll be real surprised to see anyone up here, especially me. Unless he doesn't make it, in which case I'm a little worried. made it up to the north end of Battleship. The sun has set, but I didn't need to use my headlamp. I'm eternally grateful. Saturday morning, I am leaving Battleship Mountain. Absolutely unexpectedly when I arrived, 
last night I hear a voice and it was my friend Brevin and he uh, had come up here to meet me on my last night out brought me some cold brew coffee and some fresh fruit very unexpected because he's a uh, He's done this loop before, this icon loop. Yeah, that was the last thing I expected, making this whole trip more memorable. It's a little bittersweet finishing such an amazing trip. But on the bright side, I get to go home and play some music. I'm, uh, when I'm not running around having adventures, I also like to play bass guitar. And I'm playing at a benefit show tonight with the band, uh, the Dirty Roads Band. Gonna be a fun time. And then my wife has been on a business trip and she lands at 9.30 this evening. And while I've enjoyed motorboating the bosom of Mother Nature, I miss my lady, so it'll be good to see her too. Live a life you don't need a vacation from. I'm doing my best. For the second time. I was literally, I just was like, you know what? I don't know what Troy's doing. He's, like, he's probably climbing another mountain right now. <laughs> no. Just taking my sweet time. You must have been. Yeah, it's top 20, dude. I know. I got plenty of time. Uh, you just first water road back to Jacob's Crosscut? Is that what right. you did? Yeah. Okay. yeah, there's no other. Well, I mean, you can take this. This will run along the dirt road, so you're not following the dirt road. I'll do that. A little more authentic. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yeah, and man. thanks again for the treats. Hi, man. The I'm magic. glad to be able to do it. Yeah, I was standing here. I was telling everybody that came by. I said, well, I'm here because I'm here just to support my buddy, Troy. I want to make sure he has a good time. But this guy's up here. Free climbing. You don't have to send search and rescue. He made it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, I'm Ray. Troy, hey, pleasure, sir. I haven't heard about Troy in all this morning. All right. I'm almost back to my vehicle. What are my closing thoughts on this well-crafted tour of the Superstition Mountains? This whole enchilada, this icon loop? If you love to backpack and you love the superstitions, do it. Um, of course, it'd be better after some rain. Definitely don't do it in the summer, but do it. I've been making memories in the superstitions for many years, and this memory will shine brightly indeed. And a shout out to Jerry, Arizona. This is your brainchild. Well done, sir. A moment of brilliance. And another shout out to Moon Juice. You threw a lap on this thing and you stopped by just to give me some more supplies. You're a good guy. Carpe diem. So what are my closing thoughts on the well-craft on my action-packed Superstition Mountain multi-day gravity.